as the sun sets in the valley of the shadow, Phoenix, Arizona. It's an honor to be here with a dear brother and Thank you. part of my family, Jared Madsen. Welcome back to the Jake Feinberg Show. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Can you talk Which about lens are looking to? You got three lenses there. Top one? Yeah. How's that? Oh, you're good, baby. Cool. Yeah. You're good, baby. Can you talk about why you chose Matthew Ryan and Brother Lesman for this particular tour, and then larger, how they fit into what you're doing conceptually on the bandstand? Uh, well, to be flat out honest, no. No, I like honesty. No slam on them. No, no. I chose them out of necessity. Um, I have my my drummer is Joe Lyle. Bless you, brother. Mwah. Bass player. I dig. Either. Tony Ferraro or Hannah Van Loon, but um, they're busy with their own tours. I did. Talk so about I chose, the tour. How, how so is I chose the, so how, how, what is the, has been inspiring and what do you guys need to grow in? Well, let me first say that I chose these guys out of necessity because of that dynamic, but it was a beautiful thing because Andrew, um, I went to high school with, so I was kind of chat with my pop one day and he's like, oh, why don't you get Andrew? And he kind of put him, it was random, but I was like, oh, that's a good idea. So I hit up Andrew, I sent him the music. My main thing when I want when I want to work with people, I don't care if they're like super, super good, and even though Andrew's amazing. I care about if they like the music or not. So I, I sent my, for example, I, this person will go unnamed, but I sent my music to a very celebrated drummer. And like, not that I want like a, Pat on the back or whatever. Affirmation, but, yeah. Yeah, but like I sent the music to him, no response, and then like a week later he's like, yeah, I'm down. Whereas with another person who might not be as good as that person, which is not Andrew again, because Andrew's one of the most technical, beautiful, talented drummers I've ever Dude, he played with known. Matt Politano, who's a fucking badass, the baddest piano player. Right. Yeah, with Fer Stephen Ferroni, my dear friend. And so for that thing, I, I would rather have someone who's like, oh, I freaking love the music and I believe in it and I want to grind But I mean, he it. got back to you immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he did, he did. I'm like, I can pay you X amount, which is all I could afford. And he's like, I'm in, boom. So, and then Matthew, I was a professor at this college. I got fired, but he was one of my students. You can drop the name of the college. I don't, I, who would yeah, fire Jerry? Miracos it's okay. Mi no, no skin on them, but Miracles to college. Dude, this fucking, this family, man. Celebrate uh, the Madsons, dude. Thanks, brother. Unreal, man. So, so, so talk a little bit about how things are manifesting for you. Well, the, the first gig was in Chicago, and that was a nightmare in my mind. No, no offense to the guys, but I was very uh, full of anxiety, and I was wondering how my music would be coming across because yeah. I was, I felt like it wasn't there. But then, uh, and then we played uh, Cleveland, and they had no, like no sound system, and I was stressed again. And then we played Toronto, and then like half the crowd left after a set because this huge local uh, band, which is really cool. I love them, Mother Tongues. Shout out, love those guys. But like half their fans left after they're done. So then I was like taking the Miles Davis approach. I'm like, I should have just played first, Absolutely. even though it's my tour. Like I, like Miles Davis always loved to play first, and so I was like. Next, so now tonight, I'm like playing in the middle because I'm, 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 I'm like, I'm not delusional. Like I'm a new artist. I don't have a Yo, huge fan base. Bring the voltage, dog. So I'm like, I should have played first. So anyways, all these things. Miles weighing, Voltage Cat. These were weighing against my mind. And then we traveled on a ferry in the middle of Canada. So in between Toronto and uh, Montreal to this town called uh, Wolf Island. And uh, took a ferry to Wolf Island. We played this gig. And from the moment we started, there was like electricity. And I felt this uh, serene sense of peace that the music was finally going to sound the way I wanted it to sound with these guys. And these guys are, they are working very hard. And I, that's amazing. What was the but date I, on but, that? But I was like, the date? Cause you've been on tour for a minute. I don't remember the date on that, but it's-, it's uh, You don't remember, the tour is gone. It's documented, it's documented. So the electricity <laughs> but, was there. Well, here's the thing. I was like struggling with the fact that like I want my music to sound a certain way to people who are listening, no matter who's there, and it wasn't sounding that way. And then finally at Wolf Island, it was. So these guys were working really hard, and it sounded really good. Um, That's beautiful. I don't have to answer the question, but yeah. Dude, it was out of necessity, and you're fucking doing it. So tell me a little bit about like, you know, as far as like. Where do you need to push yourself out of your comfort zone? Is it control? Is it 
being able to tell a story in a short sequence. I mean, you got a box now. So I talked to those cats and it's kind of, it's dialed in. I mean, as Matson too, I was interested in the idea of going outside of my comfort zone. Sure. You felt comfortable with Jonathan there? Yeah, because yeah. it's an improvisatory environment. However, no matter how disappointing this will be to you and your listeners, <laughs> I don't- Just to me, baby. I want to be comfortable right now. I want the music to be well-crafted. I want it to be specific. And I want it to sound the perfect way that I want it to sound. So I'm not interested in pushing myself in a uh, improvisatory way. I'm interested in pushing myself in a way where like, I want this to sound like the record. Um, does that make sense? But the ju the juice is still there, bro. The juice Yo, is still there. I'm dude, still doing the juice. Dude, I'm gonna be marinating in that juice tonight. Okay. Dude. Yeah, awesome. I want you to just talk a little bit about what your dad has meant to you as a spirit. Well, he used to call me his uh, court musician, I believe. He was the king. We are the court musicians. He was the king. And he would, uh, you know, growing up the way we grew up, Jehovah's Witness, it wasn't really um, encouraged to pursue music. Really? It was like, it's very, you know, they encourage creativity, but. But not for a but livelihood. Like, yeah. As a livelihood, like, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay. You're going to have corrupted, whatever. So, which I respect. But he always encouraged us to pursue music because he's an artist. And he knew the power of music. And so, and he also knew that I was really bad at nailing in a nail because he's a carpenter. And he's like, they can't nail in a nail. <laughs> Me neither. And man. he plays <laughs> guitar good. So like, yeah, yeah. why not encourage the twins to like pursue music? So that's what we did. And so he would, uh, every night when he'd get home, he'd have his tall boy of cores and he'd give us Slim Jims, these little Slim Jims. And it was a snack that we look for. We always look forward to a snack when he got home. Give us these like Slim Jims. or like even later than that? Uh, six to seven. He's a hard working construction guy. Mom was like teaching? Mom's or? a house cleaner. But she would have dinner ready, but you were ready for the snack. She had dinner, but we loved the little Slim Jims. It was a, it was a little thing where like my dad was like, if I'm going to go to the liquor store to buy beer, <laughs> I'm going to buy my kids something. So he bought us little Slim Jims, 10 cents. And then the Slim Jims started stopping and I realized that's when my dad cut back on drinking which is good but he stopped going to the liquor store blah, blah, blah. and then like yeah so no more Slim Jims but it was a, you know it was good that he wasn't the, the, doing that the, uh, there's truth within the, the Matson family lineage do you uh... oh but let me say one more thing please so literally like clockwork he would expect us to basically play music for him every night like in our jam room. no warming up just hit yeah just hit and he he literally sit on the bed for hours watching us play like how cool is that dude? i mean dude for a dad i haven't talked you... about that very much and i don't think um i've ever talked about that but um yeah he would sit there he would still have his vodka and he'd drink at home but he wouldn't go to the liquor store anymore and then like we just play for him for hours, and, and he like, wouldn't—he wouldn't be like a DJ, like listen to these grooves. Like he would just let you guys just do your thing. He just wanted us to do our thing, but he uh, would bring home jazz records. He brought home some Grant Green, some Coltrane, <laughs> some uh, yeah. And then I realized, then I found out later that he would do light shows for the Velvet Underground and for the Dead and really for Quicksilver it. Messenger Service. And I realized, like, oh wow, he doesn't only listen to classical music and jazz. He used to be a gnarly like psychedelic rocker. Um, so I guess it started, I start. not only did I start respecting him more, I started realizing why he like loved music so much, you know, and why he was like entertained by us every night, just experimenting. So we do like free jazz. We do random stuff every night. There's some recordings that we have from way back in the day where you could like hear him talking or laughing or whatever. But, uh, yeah. Bless you, Jan. Yo, uh. Final question for you. Yeah. I want to, you think Bob Magnuson should play with Madsen too? I do. I think it would be a, It would be, I mean, is Jonathan like- It would like, be a learning experience for all of us. I know he's like, you know, he's, he's a, he's a, does Jonathan believe that, that uh, you can be a professional musician? Jonathan who? Your brother. Of course he does, yeah. So, yeah. How, like, is he gigging on his own? I just, to me, so much of my fantasy is always just enjoying YouTube. Thank you. And yeah, I, Jonathan has 
a wife and two kids. He loves music. He lives in music, music. He's a booking agent now. He books over 30, 40 bands. Sure. So he lives and breathes music on that level where he's like a he's booking agent now. He's yeah. But we have Matt's and Two shows planned and we have a new record planned. And, oh, you yeah. do? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you do? Well, I just for the record, every day, we well, you know, not every day, but side two of Love Supreme, Matt's and Two. Yeah. Absolutely some of the most healing music in the Thank world. Thank you, The whole album is insane. I'm honored to be on the show. Can I do one last thing before we go? Should we show you some of my parkour? Okay, do whatever you Stay want. There. Yeah. Stay there. All right, baby. Parkour! Yeah, Jared Madsen, my brother. This is Jake Feinberg's show. Thank you, everyone. See you later. Come on.